And because of that, and because he sees the same data we do and knows he is losing, Donald Trump continues to push a flailing strategy designed to prevent people's votes from being counted. What we're seeing on these legal suits are that they are meritless and nothing more than an attempt to distract and delay what is now inevitable. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. Bob is going to talk to you more about that legal strategy and what we're doing about it. But first, I want to walk you through where we are in the states. So yesterday when we spoke, which feels like a long, longer time ago than it probably actually is, um, we went through a number of states with you. Um, so let's take you through those. So first of all, Wisconsin, uh, counting is finished and the media has called that state for Joe Biden. Uh, we have won Wisconsin. We are carrying over a 20,000 um, vote margin there. We feel very good uh, about any path forward there with a big victory in Wisconsin uh, coming out yesterday. In Nevada, the vice president leads here by about 8,000 votes, and our, our data shows that we will win here. We expect counting to be finished and results announced today. We know that some of that data will come in at noon. That's our understanding, noon Eastern time. Uh, and so we, like you, are going to wait to see what that data puts forward. Um, we expect some bounce in the data throughout the day. It's possible that we might see some of the more rural and in-person votes coming in uh, at that noon window um, with other more favorable um, for us votes coming later in the day. So don't be surprised if we bounce. We're talking about you know, a small margin here to begin with, but we should see some ups and downs throughout the day depending on the order of uh, the results coming through today. Um, but at the end of the day, when all the votes are counted, we are confident that we will be ahead in Nevada. Michigan, counting is finished and the media has called that state for Joe Biden. We have won Michigan, another significant victory for us coming in later yesterday afternoon. All right, so let's head to Pennsylvania. Um, the counting continues today. Uh, we expect it will continue throughout the day. Uh, there are more than 600,000 ballots outstanding. And after counting yesterday, we continue to see ourselves nearing parity with Donald Trump. So you've probably watched the ticker uh, on most of the networks. Uh, our, the margin that Donald Trump is ahead, uh, we continue to close, and we expect that gap to continue. Uh, we believe um, from our data that the majority of the outstanding ballots left are for the vice president, and that at the end of the day, and let us hope it's the end of today, but at the end of the day, uh, we will win by a sizable number of votes in Pennsylvania. Um, but we need to make sure uh, that we continue the count there, and that count is underway, and we're going to be patient and wait for it, um, but our path forward is a path to victory in Pennsylvania. In Arizona, uh, already a number of media outlets have called Arizona for the vice president. We continue to feel confident about Arizona, and we believe uh, we have won there, um, though the counting has not uh, been finished. So we are waiting on uh, Arizona to continue to count. We saw some counts last night. There's going to be more today. Um, we do expect, similar to Nevada, that some of the margin will continue to close today as more data comes in. From our understanding of how the, the data is going to be reported, um, we uh, believe that we will see uh, some more rural and other counties that might be less favorable to us coming in earlier. Um, Pima County, a county that is very favorable for the vice president, we understand might not report until tomorrow. Uh, and Maricopa, which is the county where Phoenix is, um, we know is likely to report at least some of their outstanding ballots, but not until later tonight. So the story of Arizona is one where Joe Biden is going to win, but it's going to take us uh, time uh, and patience as we go through uh, the counting. You might see, we would expect to see, uh, and, and we will see a tightening of that margin throughout the day but more favorable data will be coming in this evening and even into tomorrow. Um, uh, so just be, be conscious of that and, and be calm as you see that throughout the day. So let's talk about two other states that are uh, still out there and still in play. Um, one that is getting a lot of attention and that we are also obviously very focused on. That would be Georgia. This race, as we said the last time we spoke, is a true toss up. 
And uh, we are seeing uh, this as of this morning, and I know the Secretary of State just had a press conference, um, our, uh, we are seeing us continuing to cut into the advantage that Donald Trump has. He is leading by about 18,000 votes, but there are a significant number of outstanding ballots um, that the Secretary of State just spoke to uh, that we expect to be coming in throughout the day. Some counties like Fulton County or Atlanta is counted through the night. Um, but we have a very good sense of where the outstanding uh, ballots are, um, mostly coming from more Democratic-leaning areas, as well as from mail-in voters, uh, places where the vice president has had significant support across the country. Um, so we uh, believe that Georgia, while continuing to be a toss-up, while continuing to be something that is going to be very, very close, at this stage, leans to the vice president. Uh, and so keep an eye on Georgia throughout the day as we are, but I think um, we're heading on our path to close that 18,000 uh, vote margin and uh, potentially overtake it. North Carolina, um, the final state to speak to today, this race continues to be very tight. Uh, no real changes in terms of updated data, um, but we're staying on top of what's coming in, uh, making sure that we have a very good sense of that and we'll provide updates uh, as we see throughout the day. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how we're approaching and thinking about the states. Uh, we are grateful to everyone who is doing the hard, hard work of counting votes in these states. Counting votes uh, and, and counting every vote is a fundamental tenet of our democracy. Uh, and we are, are so grateful for the hard work that's being done, uh, as we said, with people counting overnight and day after day. Um, keep at it, but doing a great job, and we're grateful that work. Um, this is happening, you know, this is what's happening right now. This is how we are looking at the morning. Uh, I think the story of today is going to be a very positive story uh, for the vice president, but also one uh, where folks are going to need to stay patient and stay calm. The counting is happening. It's going to take time. We need to allow it to get done and done well. Uh, and we're very confident whatever happens uh, with the counting and the timing, we will come out ahead. We are absolutely confident that Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. Uh, and we are equally confident that we're gonna be able to watch uh, the counting throughout the day and, and into tomorrow to finalize these last states that are gonna put us over the top to 217. So with that update, I'm now gonna hand this uh, presentation over to Bob Bauer to talk a little bit more about how we are looking at uh, Donald Trump's efforts in these final hours uh, and the strategy that we're putting forth um, on our behalf. So, Bob, over to you. Thank you, Jen. I just wanted to uh, put into the right sort of frame and perspective what you are hearing from some of the states about Trump claims and Trump lawsuits. Uh, and I think they're connected. The lawsuits uh, are meritless. They're intended to give the Trump campaign the opportunity to argue that the vote count should stop. It is not going to stop. And I'll walk through uh, some of the silliness behind these claims momentarily. But I want to emphasize that for their purposes, these lawsuits don't have to have merit. That's not the purpose. It's not to put, bring bona fide claims before the courts. It is to create an opportunity for them to message falsely about what's taking place in the electoral process. And to go to Jen's point, it's really quite remarkable. These election officials are working overnight trying to get the count out and trying to get it right. And the Trump campaign is continually alleging irregularity, failures of the system and fraud uh, without any basis. This is part of a broader misinformation campaign uh, that involves some political theory, theater. You may have heard about uh, some loud noises being made by Trump supporters at the polling places. Uh, the shouts of stop the vote count and the like. Well, be aware that wherever this is happening, and it's happening inappropriately at close proximity to the polling place, uh, law enforcement and election officials are clearing the places quickly of this kind of behavior and assuring that the vote count can continue. But all of this is intended to create a large cloud that it is the hope of the Trump campaign that nobody can see through, but it is not a very thick cloud. It's not hard to see what they're doing. We see through it. So will the courts, and so do election officials. Now, let me begin, uh, let me just close by saying a little bit so that you have some grounding in what these lawsuits uh, seem to be about. Let's take two, three examples, Georgia, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So let's take Georgia. In Chatham County, uh, the Trump campaign showed up to allege that 
53 late arriving ballots were mixed with ballots received on time. What was the evidence of that? Well, a Trump observer expressed some suspicion about something that may have happened uh, when that uh, observer left the room. That was it. That was the sole purpose of it, uh, the sole basis of it is sort of an expression of suspicion. So the Trump campaign requested that Georgia counties separate uh, any and all late arriving ballots. Well, that's interesting because that's what election officials are already doing because that's what the law requires. So you have a suspicion that is expressed as the basis for a lawsuit demanding that election officials do what election officials are already doing because the law requires it. I think it's kind of comic, but that's what's involved. Another example comes from Michigan. In Michigan, uh, the Trump campaign uh, filed suit alleging that Republican inspectors should have been afforded the opportunity to witness the collection of ballots from drop boxes, and they asked for the counting uh, to be halted. Well, the collection from the drop boxes was conducted by trained election officials, precisely as provided by law, and the claim is completely meritless. It's a messaging exercise. It has no other purpose than to confuse uh, the public about what's taking place and to support their baseless claims of irregularity. Final example from Pennsylvania. They continue to file suits in this case. In many cases, they're litigating over issues they've already litigated. So they're kind of running out of ideas and they're recycling them. And in other instances, they're filing over utterly immaterial matters like where they may be permitted to stand and observe while the counting takes place. Uh, as another example, they've intervened in a pending Supreme Court case in, involving Pennsylvania. But their lawyers are already there representing the Republican Party. So they're intervening one more time with the same legal team to duplicate a filing that's already taken place to give people the impression that something important is happening in the United States Supreme Court, but in fact, it's not. Uh, it's the same old case with the same parties lined up arguing the same issues. Nothing has changed. So let me just close by saying this strategy of disrupting the vote count, as you can tell by the efforts of election officials to continue to count, is doomed to fail. But in the background, the noise is fraud, irregularity, and the like. And the lawsuits and the disruptive behavior are all for that purpose of trying to get the vote counted, try to confuse the public about what's taking place. And we'll make sure the public is clear about what's taking place and election officials operating under the law will make sure that the vote count continues. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, and thanks, everyone. We're happy to take some questions. Uh, we'll go to Hannah Trudeau first. Hannah, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, thanks for doing this. I, I'm wondering, Jen, if you can speak a little bit more in depth about why you feel um, as certain as you do about, about Arizona, and also curious if you've spoken or had any contact with the Trump campaign today. Hey, Hannah. Yeah, so um, Arizona, we... <laughs> We felt good about all along. Uh, it wouldn't be a presentation if I didn't say that I'm bullish on Arizona. Um, you know, look, we um, really uh, understand um, that uh, this is a race that we've been ahead. We expected it all along to be close. Uh, and as we look at the um, data that's outstanding, um, we see a number of Democratic uh, counties that are yet to report. Uh, Maricopa, um, we, you know, as I said today, we do expect the margin to be closing. We knew that and we had seen that um, even coming into um, election uh, night after uh, we started to see the results. So this is the trajectory that we uh, have been headed. Um, we will win by tens of thousands of votes, um, but that margin will close. And as I said, um, you know, uh, Arizona and Nevada, I think there'll be some bounce throughout the day um, and the margin will tighten, but that's what we've been expecting all along. Um, and, the, you know, the only challenge with Arizona is um, the data. Now, if we understand it as we currently uh, do in terms of timing, it could be tonight and as well as Pima coming in tomorrow um, and, and more of Maricopa tomorrow as well. So it might take a little bit longer to get there. Um, we have not uh, had contact throughout the day and we're just plugging along with uh, our focus on making sure uh, the, the votes are counted uh, and that we're uh, pushing forward here.
Hi, I'm with Alex Jaffe next. Hi guys, thanks for holding this call. Um, Jen, I wanted to check in since you are expressing confidence at the ultimate result of the election, if you guys have started ramping up transition planning and if you can speak about sort of what that looks like imminently, what you're planning to announce in the coming days after the, the race is called, if it is called in your favor. So the good thing is that I'm the campaign manager, and so what I'm focused on is getting these final votes done. Um, you know, we're, we're very focused on making sure the counting goes on. Um, you know, the vice president uh, is continuing to do the things that, um, you know, he's been doing every step of the way, not losing sight of the fact that COVID uh, cases are rising day after day in this country as well, and making sure that he's briefing on that. Um, so we're going to just continue to focus on, on the campaign and, and um, uh, closing out these final states. Uh, we have Chris Smith next. Hey, good morning. Thanks for talking. Uh, one for each of you. Jen, given where the counts are, is there a state you think is going to come in first and get you over 270? And Bob, um, we haven't seen it. Well, have you seen any evidence of the Attorney General, uh, Bill Barr, getting involved in any of this uh, maneuvering on Trump's side, and do you expect to see it? So um, just to that first question, um, to be honest, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think that um, we are doing our best, like everyone else is, to get a sense of timing, um, you know, and, and monitoring that. You know, we will see more moving in a number of places this morning. Um, certainly, we know from an Arizona standpoint, the current timing puts us into tomorrow. Um, you know, Pennsylvania has a large volume of uh, ballots to still go through, um, so that will take some time. So at this stage, it's, it's not clear, um, you know, when that final count will come and the timing, um, and we're just going to stay close uh, on all of them. As for uh, the Attorney General, no, we have not seen uh, any indication of any kind of unusual or concerning activity there. There'd be no basis for the Department of Justice to become involved. The conduct of these elections uh, is the responsibility of the states, and as we can all see, they're perfectly capable of uh, conducting these counts uh, and also of enforcing order. And indeed, that is what they are, that's what they're charged with doing. So this is a state matter, not a matter for the Department of Justice, and we see no reason to believe that that uh, fundamental allocation of responsibility uh, is one that uh, the Attorney General is planning to challenge in any way. Uh, for our last question, we have Asma Khalid. Hi there. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. Um, two quick questions. Um, one is, what is your sense of the, your, your sort of best sense of the remaining vote in Philly? And then also, I know there was an iteration of this kind of ask, but amongst the remaining states, do you have any sense if you could sort of rank them for me in terms of your level of optimism, if you feel <laughs> just where you think they are, if we could rank uh, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania? So, um, you know, Pennsylvania and Philly in particular, I know there's a lot of um, uh, uncertainty about the exact numbers there, and I know there's a, a few different um, narratives kind of swirling online. Um, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of ballots outstanding. You know, we think it's probably um, in the 500 to 700,000 plus across the whole state. Um, what I can tell you is that what we have seen um, in places like Milwaukee and Detroit and Pittsburgh, um, and, and we also expect in Philly is, is very high turnout. Um, and so, uh, you know, we think that there is uh, still significant outstanding ballot in Philly, but of course across the entire state. And uh, as folks know, the, the vice president has been carrying very, very high margins uh, with vote by mail uh, in particular and from um, uh, communities like these. And so uh, we expect that we will have a really strong showing today as the counting is underway. Um, you know, in, in terms of um, the states and, and optimism, 
You know, look, I, I feel very, very good about all the states. I think North Carolina is a, a little bit tighter, a little bit tougher. Um, you know, uh, we are looking for that moment in Pennsylvania and Georgia today where we see that ticker overtake Donald Trump. We think it's going to happen. Um, but I'm confident in all four, uh, bullish uh, on, on the, all four of those states. I'm going to expand my statement on bullishness uh, outside of Arizona. Um, but we're very optimistic. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't really care which state takes us over the top. We just want to keep uh, going and make sure the counts get done. And, and as I said earlier, um, you know, the counting is underway. We know that it's going to take a little bit of time, uh, and we support that, and we're just going to stay calm um, and, uh, uh, and be patient. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll, we'll be situated well, regardless of uh, what those early states uh, are with the remainder of the ones in which take us over the top. So with that, I think we are going to conclude here. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll keep staying in touch and being transparent uh, as we learn more details. Um, really looking forward to the hours uh, ahead of us uh, and, and being together again uh, with uh, Joe Biden as our next president. Thank you all.